Hey fam, it's Rachel. We are about to kick off a summer if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, winter if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. We are about to kick off a summer extravaganza of prayer because y'all don't need to be learning about demons and the signs of the uh, Illuminati or what's going on with the Antichrist and cryptocurrency and all of this. If y'all don't have this one thing in check, and I know your pastors aren't teaching you about it, they're not talking about it because they don't know it. So before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses so you're notified of a new gospel message because of course your pastor doesn't know it, but Satan, YouTube, and Google, they're one and the same and they do not want you to know the gospel and they will never notify you of a new gospel message unless you hit subscribe with the bell with the parentheses. So let's get started. Now we just finished a four-part series with my dad, Scott Stevens, the expert on speaking in tongues, we just finished a series about just the basics, the basics of speaking in tongues. And I got so much positive feedback from that and so many other questions. We're just going to continue out the series. So you can think of this as like prayer university. This entire summer is going to be about your prayer life because you can sit there and try to understand the Bible and try to figure out what's going on with the end time signs and all of this jizzle jazz. But if you don't have your prayer life in check, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, number one, you're going to be lost. You're not going to understand it. Your prayers are going to suck. And then you're going to wonder why Satan is beating you up. So before we talk any more about the Bible and all the stories about Abraham, which I mean, these are all things that you need to know, but 101 new believers, brand new believers, older believers who have been in garbage churches where they don't teach you about this stuff. We have to get your prayer life in check. We got to get your prayer life in check because when you have your prayer life in check, where you have a relationship with God, all the other gifts of the Holy Spirit follow. All the other nine gifts follow. Not only that, but you have all of the armor of God because we're told in Ephesians 6 to put on the full armor of God. And if you're not praying at all times, if you don't have the sword of the spirit, if you don't have that relationship with God, you don't have any armor. So Satan's going to be beating you up and you're going to be, oh, why, why, why? Because your prayer life needs to be in check. So I want you filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to have that relationship with God. So if you have not already seen the other four part series, that's going to be, that's going to be Prayer University 101. That is our intro level class. Go check out those four videos. Of course, links are always in the description box below, but this is going to be the start of class 102. We are going to be talking about the three different types of speaking in tongues to kick off this series. And not only that, we are going to be talking about demonic distractions. We are going to be talking about what happens in the demonic realms, how you're going to go out and pray for your city. These are things that build upon 101. Prayer University 101, learning about the Holy Spirit. So you need to watch those four videos first, and then all the other ones build on it. You don't start reading a physics book without learning the ABC. So please watch these in order. And again, this is going to be about two hours worth, worth of footage that I'm going to cut up into 20 minute, about 20 minute sections where it's just me and my dad, Scott Stevens, who is an evangelist. He is like the expert on praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. It's just going to be us talking about these things. But today on this episode, we are going to be talking about the three different types of speaking in tongues. So let's just jump right in. We were talking in our last videos for people who haven't watched them, that there are different types of speaking in tongues. And if you haven't watched those videos, you need to check those out first because unfortunately so many people will say, oh, speaking in tongues is for the apostolic age. Nah, they're wrong. They're straight wrong. They don't understand what they're saying. So make sure you check out those first four videos first. But at the end of the last video, I touched on a certain type of speaking in tongues that are that most people are not aware of. And that would be the tongue of angels. Now, the first type of speaking in tongues is 
speaking as a ministry part where you are speaking in tongues to a congregation, like on the day of Pentecost, where it's building up the church. The second type of speaking in tongues is your personal prayer life where not even Satan can understand what you are praying. It is like God encrypted. But the third type is a little bit more confusing because so few people talk about it. And this is the praying in the tongue of angels. Now you might be confused and say, the tongue of angels? I thought Satan couldn't understand my prayers. What are you talking about? So again, I have my dad, Scott Stevens, back on to talk about these topics because so many people had questions about speaking in tongues and we need to get this squared away before we can move on to anything else in Genesis because we've been talking about how Abram disobeyed the Holy Spirit. And if you don't even understand how to recognize the Holy Spirit's prompting, you can't obey the Holy Spirit. So that is why we got to get this squared away before we can move into anything else in Genesis, before we talk about any more about Abram and Lot and Sarai and all the rest of the Bible. We have to get this squared away because when you have your prayer life under control, when you develop your relationship with God, things are going to change. So dad, let's speak about the tongue of angels today. Okay, I want to recap, on, and, and you did talk last time on the day of Pentecost, whenever the believers in the upper room started praying in tongues, all the people, the Jews from the different countries all over the place, they each heard the disciples praising God in their own tongues. So like if you were a Jew who lived in Arabia, you, know, you were hearing these people speaking Arabic. If they were from Jews that lived in Egypt there for the festival, they, they heard them in their own language. So this was a supernatural act. Those tongues could be understood. So they were assigned to these unbelievers. This was the first supernatural act of the ecclesia, the body of Christ, in the book of Acts. This is how it opened up. Then we looked in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we saw the second type of tongue. In verse 2, it says, anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people. Well, they were speaking to people in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. But the tongue that Paul is talking about here in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, says, whoever speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. So this, it says, for indeed no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. So something is going on in this type, of this speaking unto God, this prayer, prayer in the Spirit. The devil can't even understand this stuff because it is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in union with you. We've been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Jesus told us that he would come with the Father and, and make their abode in us. To abide means to, to make your permanent dwelling place. Right. We are the temple of God. So they're having a conversation with our spirit. Let me go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 to clear this up a little bit. If you've ever been to a funeral, you can even watch them on TV. And you'll hear people make the statement, and they'll say, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But he has revealed it to us through the Spirit. By his Spirit. So this isn't something that you get after you die and you go to heaven. It's like, oh, man, there's things you... There's things you can't even imagine that God has prepared for us, and we're going to see them when we get on the other side of glory. Jesus brought the glory down on the man of transfiguration. Moses and Elijah and the Father were there to talk with, with Jesus, and they saw him in his glory. I know one of your favorite chapters in the whole Bible. Tell, tell everybody what your favorite chapter is. What, 2 Kings 6? There you go. Let's just get a rundown of uh, the story of Elisha and the chariots of fire. But... um. The enemies of Elisha were coming to surround the city, and one of the servants was really worried about this. So Elisha prayed. Again, here you have prayer, and he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when he did, the servant's eyes were open, and he saw angels preparing for battle, chariots of fire, 
all getting ready to squash this physical human army. So mm -hmm. God's angels in the spiritual realm were preparing for battle. And the only way that this servant was able to see these things was through prayer, intercessory prayer from Elisha on his behalf. Yeah, here's the deal. You know, people say, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. Man, this stuff's all around us. God prepares things for us today in this realm of existence while we're still alive. Well, he prepares he good things for us. Ephesians, uh, uh, he has made us to sit in heavenly places, or he has seated, has seated. When you become a follower of, of the king of the universe, King Jesus, the Messiah, the prophet, like unto Moses, the high priest of the faith after the order of Melchizedek, king of kings and the Lord of lords, the ruler of the kingdom of God. Right. When, when you make him your king, you are made a king because he's king of kings. You're royalty. You're a, you're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. He imparts all of this to you. You're in the family of God, and he seats you in heavenly places. You don't wait till you die. And this is not talking about ancient Israel. This is talking about his people now, because Galatians yeah. 3 tells us that we are the heirs according to the promise that uh -huh. came from Abram. Or Abraham, excuse me, because it says there is but one heir, and that heir is Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Jesus, you are heirs according to the promise. So don't get this twisted and say, oh, that's about the nation of Israel. We are Israel. So well, go we're ahead. We're the people of God. Exactly. Uh, we're his and, chosen and, people. Yeah. Jesus is the king of Israel. If right. If you reject the king, you're not part of the Jesus kingdom. is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the one who walked with Abram. So go ahead. Anyway. But, but anyway, speaking of the spirit, you know, we hear in funerals all the time, oh, sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, he's on the other side and he's seeing what eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither have entered into the hearts of men. The thing, but he's, he's over there. He can see them. You don't have to wait till you die to go see that. Right. Because that's right here, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But verse 10 goes on, but, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. You want to know the things of God? The spirit of God is going to reveal them to you. It goes on to say, I mean, I'm just paraphrasing here. If you keep reading 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 10, it says the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. You want to know the deep things of God? The Holy Spirit's going to be the one that reveals them to you. That's what Jesus talked about the night he was arrested after he told them all to love one another. He, he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. He's going to take from me and reveal it unto you. Well, the Bible says that no man can receive something unless he has been given it from heaven, from the spirit. Right, right. No man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. First right. Corinthians 12, 3. It has to be a revelation that comes from him. But it, it says no one knows the things of a man save the spirit of the man which is in him. And by the same token, nobody knows God's spirit except the spirit of God. And he takes from the spirit of God and reveals it to us. Now, <clears throat> one of the questions that comes up a lot of times is people will say, can the devil read your mind? Yes, the devil can read your mind. I mean, we have people right now that are running prosthetics, the MIT, they're running machinery, like grown and different electronic pieces of equipment that you can think, and it will cause the drone to go up or down. You can turn to the left, turn to the right, and it's all operating off your brain waves. Because people don't understand that while we have one plane of existence, we have no idea what the, the physical tells are in other planes of existence. For mm -hmm. example, we don't see radio waves. We don't see microwaves. Mm -hmm. But these things obvi obviously exist, the radiation waves. But we just don't see them with our physical eyes. So to say Satan can't read our minds, we have no idea what brain waves look like in the spiritual realm. Well, so. they're talking about right now, they think that with the technology that they're telling us about, which is way ahead of what they're even telling us about, 
that they can accurately determine 80 percent of what you're thinking with the technology that we have today right so an mri is not more powerful than satan oh uh-huh. the so, doctor can understand what you're thinking but not this satan why, this is why you need to be thinking on the word of god right the weapons of our warfare aren't carnal they're mighty through god they're not of this world let me back up. it says what man knows the things of a man save the spirit of the man which is in him even so the things of god knows no man but the spirit of god it says now Right now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but But the the spirit spirit. which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. If you want to know what belongs to you, you you better develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit. You you can understand his presence in your life, which takes I want to go back to first Corinthians 14. Now, the best way to develop a relationship with somebody is to commune with them. And when we're praying in the Spirit, we're praying mysteries. You're I told you speaking, about the last week. Prayer is just talking to God. That's all yeah. it is. You're just talking to God. Right. Now, in this, we, we talked about the, the tongues that were for the unbeliever. Yes. It was a sign to them. It's like, well, how is he speaking the language of the people in Burundi right now? It's only through the Holy Spirit that such a thing could occur. Yeah, yeah. So they're like... They're going to listen to what I've got to say, and the things that are going to be coming out of my mouth, the Holy Spirit has tailored them just for that person. Right. But 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 this one here is the the devil can't even understand this stuff. When you're praying in the Spirit, because it's the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit language that even the angels can't even speak. This is the second type of tongues, your personal prayer life that we're right. talking about. Right, because it's so important. That we understand. He says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. That's why we pray that we may interpret. And I spoke last time, a lot of times what the interpretation is, is all of a sudden you've been praying in the spirit and then this stuff comes alive and you start getting the understanding. And what's happening is the Holy Spirit is revealing to you what's been prayed for. But it's not just the interpretation all the time prayer in the spirit when you understand like i said last time that your spirit is perfect it's flawless it's made in the image of god he has perfected forever our mind hadn't been perfected yet our human uh, it, flesh our is human being flesh sanctified <laughs> yeah it, 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 there's, that's that's resurrection day that's going to take place right but we can renew our mind but the way we do, the best way to do that the spirit and the word agree but if we pray it's this praying in the spirit that turns on all the other types of prayer but the prayer in the spirit also gives life and it's like a seed if i have a seed that seed can be a thousand it can be two thousand it can be ten thousand years old they have found seed or in different types tombs, of seed in, egyptian tombs in the egyptian tombs and they put them in soil and they put some water on them and let the heat hit them from the sun and guess what happens to those seeds after 5,000 years. They grow. They grow. They just need the environment to grow in. Well, your prayer life is what your fellowship with God, the time you spend fellowship, and prayer is fellowship. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is hearing from God. The interpretation a lot of times is just, it's hearing from God. It's spiritual soil. Yeah. So the the prayer is like the soil with all the nutrients in it. It's like the water. It's like the it's everything. This is creating the atmosphere in which all these other different types of prayer and the nine gifts of the spirit that are mentioned. The other eight all stem. How, how can from there be one. interpretation without tongues? A, without tongues, interpretation can't exist without tongues. Cover that seed of interpretation or prophecy or miracles you know there's a miracle ready to be birthed here you get that thing covered up that seed of a miracle or that seed of healing or that seed a word of knowledge or discernment when you've got you just cover this thing up with praying in the spirit it's like the soil that provides the womb for all these other seeds to come to life. I like what Paul does here. He says, what is it then in verse 15? He says, I will 
I talked about it. Your will. You start when you want. You stop when you want. I will pray with the Spirit. Notice he didn't say I will pray with the understanding first. He says I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding. Because you're not going to have any understanding if you don't first pray in the Spirit. Or you're, it's going to be very limited. Right. What you'll find out is when you start praying in the Spirit first, your understanding is going to increase exponentially at an accelerated rate that, that will blow your mind. Right. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. The Spirit comes before the flesh. It's got to come before the flesh. In Ephesians chapter 6, we're always talking about putting on the full armor of God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and heavenly realms. Then we talk about, you know, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. The, the sword of the Spirit. The, yeah, the belt of truth, taking up the shield of faith, having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and taking up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And we're all dressed up and we're ready to go, but you know what? You're supposed you to be gonna, praying. <laughs> it, it doesn't say to stop there. Now that you're all dressed up, how do we put this stuff into action? Well, if you go over to Ephesians chapter 6, he says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's verse 17. Ephesians six eighteen continues, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. When you don't know what to pray for, you begin praying in the Spirit. Then the understanding comes. You begin praying in that soil of praying in the Spirit. And all of a sudden, your prayer of intercession kicks in. Within uh, you, You're like, I didn't even know I could pray like that. Well, how that? can... How can you take up the shield of faith if you don't have any relationship with God? Because uh -huh. it says in Ephesians 16, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Uh -huh. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit or the Father, how are you going to have a shield of faith? A faith uh -huh. in what? Yeah, faith right. in what? And That's if you excellent. don't have that faith, if you don't have that shield, you are going to get pounded. You are going to be Swiss cheese when Satan gets done with you. <laughs> and every single day I get emails from people dealing with serious spiritual wickedness, serious mm -hmm. spiritual things that are happening to them. And it's because so many people don't have that shield of faith. If you are an unbeliever, I had somebody comment, I'm not a believer. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. This stuff's not for you because <laughs> as as an unbeliever, you're already screwed. You are up a creek because you don't have that protection. But let's say you have a superficial relationship with God. You yeah. don't have that shield of faith. You have to develop your relationship with the Holy Spirit so that you can actually have a shield of faith to stand strong against the schemes of the devil. And we're going to get into that talking about the demonic garbage that you're going to come up against. But let's let's keep on with this. I mean, that is a whole other topic. But well, I, like, I like the yeah. Swiss cheese thing you said there. I mean, uh, if, if, if you aren't spending time praying in the spirit where you're getting the revelation, where you understand, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Christ or the word of God that, that, that he, he wants to bring alive and, and, and make you understand. If you have no understanding, if you're not spending time in prayer, you're not going to have that. And, and like you said, you're going to be like Swiss cheese. You're going to be so shot up with the fiery darts of the devil. I mean, my God, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, they're in. They, they ain't got nothing on, on what the devil Hey, their do. car is in Nevada. I've seen uh -huh. their car. That thing is wrecked. That thing yeah, is well, blown it, it up. Ain't nothing compared to what the devil's going to do to you if you, if you don't spend time in, in God's presence. Absolutely. And then people blame God. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? God says, mm -hmm. uh, new phone, who dis? So yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like, this isn't God's fault that you have, you know, you don't spend time with them and then bad things happen and then you blame it on God. Then you fall away and then you end up going to hell because you've rejected God. So... 
Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, foolish virgin. <laughs> I'm gonna cut the video right here just because we're about at the 20 minute mark. And I want you to sit there and meditate on these things. I mean, this is why in every description box, I have every single Bible verse that I use. I have all the links that I've used for all the screenshots. And I want you to sit there and meditate on these things. These are the things that you need to, you know, look back on, pray about. Because if you don't understand prayer, none of the other stuff makes sense. Nothing else makes sense. If you want to know what God's will is for your life, you have to have a prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, you're never going to be able to recognize God's voice. And if you can't recognize God's voice, you're not going to know God's will for his life, for your life. If you can't understand God's voice, you're never going to know what God has in store for you, what his plan is for you. So you're just going to be wandering around. You're going to fall off into a ditch. And I don't want that for you. We have too little time for you to be wandering around like this. And the Holy Spirit has brought you here today for a reason. Because he's heard your cries. He knows that you need this information. Because so many people aren't talking about it. So again... We are just going to continue on with the series for as long as it takes, and then we'll jump back in to learning about the Bible, and I'll be answering your questions. And again, you can always email me if you ever have any like long or private thing that you want to ask me. If you have questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section. I mean, I get so many views on these videos and so few questions. If you have questions, let me know. I'll answer them. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And stay tuned for the very next installment of 102 of our prayer series for Prayer University from Crack Your Bible. And I will see you guys later. Bye.